Mali and Syria under the global oppression and the low jungle. We're not happy for what's happening in the world. A miserable situation. Just mere using these stereotypes and classifications as, such as Islamic terrorism. I'd like to say it is a racist classification against almost 2 billion Muslims. This world today is living miserably, homelessness, killing, tribulations. It is only because of the economical ambitions that incite all of these classifications and stereotypes. Economical ambitions are behind these stereotypes. Killing hundreds of thousands in Iraq and in Afghanistan. It happened under the justification of this economical ambitions. Despite all of the fatwas, the verdicts that have been issued against terrorism, against chaos killing, against innocent killing, despite all of those fatwas that have been issued by scholars who gathered and agreed to give such verdict, despite all of that, the word Islamic terrorism is still being used. And I start to hesitate. Is it a, an economical ambition or it is a hatred that people still carry that hatred that the Crusaders had before? I can see despite the fatwas that the scholars officially had given the West still insisting of using these provocative stereotypes and terms. And I would say it is to discourage those who have a desire to come to Islam and to be converted. You, you're watching what, what's happening in Syria. And I want to bring back your memory Two years before until today, did you ever hear the West using the word terrorist Bashar al-Assad? Bashar al-Assad belongs to a criminal cult that has a dark history in Islam. A dark history. Did they call the, the, the terrorist Bashar the Alawi terrorism? Did they call Bashar Alawi terrorist? No. No. So, the, the question is, how all the West had in instantly, instantly, in, in hours, if not in seconds, had all agreed to support uh, France, to give it all kinds of support, logistic support, any kind of other support in its... Uh, in its attack against Mali, whereas in, in in Syria, until now, they're having meetings, but the meetings did not result anything yet. Aren't you amazed at what's happening? Or you only guys think about how to enjoy Saturday night and that's all? Then you'll be thrown in a hole, not knowing why you were created for, not knowing. What is the purpose of your creation? Almost 200 killing, almost 200 victims because of the barbaric, brutal killing of this uh, uh, criminal regime in Syria. And no one is speaking out. And they're leaving Russia to say, Despite all what happened, Bashar must remain. Where is the law? Give me a definition of that global law. 
which the Americans called it the New World Order. Is that the New World Order? Where's, where's he? Where's humanity? Where's the mercy? Where are the good results and fruits of democracy? I don't see it. What I see, in fact, dictating democracy. Is there any country that dares to say no for democracy? Well, democracy had not been received, revealed by God Almighty. There's no prophet that, that had said, okay, democracy is from God Almighty. No. There are many things that had to be spoken against. I'm not saying refuse everything totally. I'm not saying it is 100% false. No. But I'm saying you're dictating it. It's not democracy anymore because it, it's, it's supposed to be based on freedom. But where's the freedom? When you dictate people on taking this democracy, otherwise you're going to be punished. You're going to be annihilated. You have formed a global police that we can see through the um, uh, United Nations. All of this had given us the thought that there is a, a global order. But we don't see that global order. I mean, we have to review these, uh, th this uh, phenomenon that if a whole country is being killed, if the whole people in the country are being killed, suddenly one of those five you know, greatest countries, they, it says veto, veto against any measure that have been taken against them. Finish. Keep doing your brutal crimes. Keep killing. No one can stop you. Where's your police against the, the worst kind of atrocity that Bashar al-Assad and his regime are committing? You're still saying that uh, um, his actions are so close to be called or classified as a genocide. So it is, it is beca almost becoming genocide. It is not genocide yet. But there's an agreement. I mean, the West is disagreeing with Russia externally. But they all agreed that no weapons should be given to the opposition. They all agreed. In fact, those who may give support to the opposition army, they may be targeted, they will be given notice, So why don't yeah the question why don't we call Bashar's actions as Alawite terrorism? No, no, you know you're not going to do that because he is your servant in annihilating Islam. Sorry to say that, but that's what I can see. Everyone that makes any offense or assault against Islam, such as burning a Quran, insulting the Prophet, he will find with you the support and the political, he will be finding with you the support and the political asylum such as what happened with Salman Rushdie, those Danish, Danish uh, uh, caricatures etc etc so when we see this kind of, of, of uh, racism some people will be taking another kind of racism as a reaction against this uh, Islamic terrorism they will be making some racist actions if any person uh, uh, make any kind of terrorism, terrorist act, which will be classified as Islamic terrorism, then every Christian will be targeted 
with the same classification. So some fanatic Muslims will be saying, all right, we're going to do something against any Christian, any blonde hair people, etc. This is a racism that, racism that is going to be facing another racism. So as a result, people don't differentiate between British, French, Dutch, Italian, or American. No. Because your classification does not differentiate between, between an Arab Muslim or a Malaysian Muslim. They're, they're, all, they're all under this uh, spe uh, specific, uh, not specific, classification. Terrorist Islamic terrorism. Two billion people would be classified, would be included in this if one of the two billions will be committing some stupid action. People in the in in the vision in in the vision of or viewed people are viewed in the perspective of those governors in the West as ants, and killing them is so similar to what we call raiding, insect raiding, spraying, spraying, uh, making a uh, spraying against. Uh, against insects the the good example of this is what had happened a couple of days ago French commanders French commandos went to Somalia and five kilometers before they saw they saw a group of Layman people, like Bedouins, in the desert, they killed them all. Fearing that if they kept them alive, they may call, you know, those Shabab group, etc., etc. They killed them all, but one remained alive, and he called those kidnappers. And as a result... The French uh, uh, army had encountered a tough and difficult resistance. So, is there any value for those people? Why we see the the, the Westerner people? They uh, they uh, they care about human rights inside other countries, but outside they can do anything, and no one can stop them. That's what's happening. So, they failed in their operation against the Somalian people, in which I disagree with. I disagree with kidnapping. I disagree with it. It is not Islamic. But at the same time, look, it shouldn't be faced with these kinds of also stupid actions as well. Killing innocent people for the sake of rescuing one person Killing tens of people? What does this mean? It means that those people are ants. So it is not only the wife of Ceausescu. It is not only the wife of Ceausescu. The so-called civilized Americans today, they could not find in the whole entire earth a place for Osama bin Laden to, to bury except in the sea and try to find a shark to swallow him. Wow! And people were shouting, Wow! America! America had gained the war against a man? Civilian man? Unarmed, sorry. Unarmed man? I wonder what's going on. I wonder what's going on. Many American soldiers, they kill um, uh, uh, Taliban soldiers and they start to piss on them. Generate over their bodies. Yeah! Yeah, we won! We won! Poor people in Afghanistan. Look at them. America needs uh, allies from the West, from Europe, allies everywhere against those poor people. Yeah, they have some clashing coughs. With these clashing coughs, the Americans had to leave Afghanistan. I don't know how to describe the world. America, inside America, if there is a thief or a kidnapper 
or any um, uh, robbery operation in a bank or etc. Or if there are some hostages in school, they'll be surrounding the school, trying to deal with people kindly, telling them to, to stop their up, uh, uh, their kidnap, etc. etc. It's a beautiful view. But when they wanted the, when they targeted the two sons of Saddam Hussein, what did they do with them? From Apache, which can launch its missiles in a distance of four kilometers, they launched the house of uh, the, the sons of Saddam Hussein. They were targeting them by missiles. What did they have? A painter, a painter woman, who drew the picture of George Bush on the entrance of a Rashid Funduk, Funduk Rashid, a Rashid hotel. Yes, the Americans have the right to speak against it, to do any action against it, but not to launch the house of this painter, and she's a woman, to launch her house with missiles, and to let the home, the whole family, oh, sorry, she went out of her house when her house was targeted by missiles and she went to her sister's house and they targeted after that her sister's house and the whole family with children, they got killed. All right, she did something that you may disagree with. Okay, I, I, we understand that. But to launch your missiles against the house, what is going on? It's horrendous. It is insane. This is insanity. I don't know how to describe that. Why these crimes have been committed by people who, who claim uh, maintaining the principles of human rights and etc. But internally, inside their countries, but not outside. Outside their countries, uh, they are mass killers. They're, they are just like Hitler. They were using Qadhafi. Qaddafi's jails, uh, Bashar al-Assad's jails, some many other countries' jails to torture their prisoners. The question is, why, it is, why is it allowed for the Danish painter, drawer, to ridicule the Prophet Muhammad and his companions and his wives? But it's not allowed or George Bush to be picture to be drawn. Why? Why this is not allowed, but that one is allowed? If the democracy allows you to draw the Prophet Muhammad out of ridiculing and mocking, which provokes two billion Muslims, is allowed. Under what? Under the justification, the pretext, the slogan of freedom, democracy? Then why is not allowed to do the same thing against George Bush? It seems to me that Allah wants to show the, the, the contradiction of those people. Why burning, burning the picture of Bush angers the Americans, while burning the Quran should not anger the Muslims. They should understand, the Muslims should understand that the democracy okay, necessitates that we should accept, we should be accepting burning the Quran with wide chests, uh, with pleasure and smile. This is the, these are the conditions of democracy, you have to accept it, you have to, to comply to the laws of democracy. I'll come back in a minute. What I want to end with is that if you boast that you are the five greatest countries in the world, Every day we say, many times, Allah is the greatest. Allah, the creator of the earth, of the universe, is the greatest. And he's not unaware, but rather well acquainted of what all you do. And well acquainted of your arrogance. But my question is, where are the Muslim scholars? to try to make a solution, to interfere, to do something peaceful, I don't see. And this is a problem. I mean, some actions that scholars take may solve the souls of many people, Muslims or Christians, 
Muslims or non-Muslims. But I feel really uh, uh, embarrassed and disappointed for this uh, uh, paralyzed kinds of people that they don't do anything. We don't see them in the, in the scene. The situation of the Muslims and the world is getting worse. I've seen something, I've seen many things in Syria and Myanmar as well. People are being brought just like that and put in the fire. They're sitting and they start starting to flame, to be, to, 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 to be burned and they're waiting for their death. Where is the international court? What are, the, what are those people who, who investigate, uh, nowadays investigating some uh, certain things in the world? They're not investigating what happened in Ma uh, Myanmar, uh, what, what's happening in Syria, targeting bakeries in Syria, bakeries. Those uh, jet fighters, MiG-23, they're not targeting Israel. They're not targeting al -Jurlan. They're not targeting Israel, uh, Israelite military. They're targeting bakeries. Thousands of people have been killed. And yesterday, a university had been targeted. So there is, it, it occurs to me, it seems to me that uh, there is an attempt to kill as much as possible those Sunni people in order to minimize them. And as a result, minimize the the uh, the terrorist uh, Sunni power that surround Israel. What is demanded? The chosen people of God must sleep peacefully. Under uh, 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 sorry, what I meant I meant to say, the chosen people of God should sleep peacefully, should live peacefully on the account of the civilian children and women. Tens of thousands of women are being raped. And the remaining Syrian army that has to fight under the, the rhyming of, the, of Bashar al-Assad, they are under threat if they resist. They know the houses of their families they will instantly go to their wives and daughters and rape them. Many of those militants are fighting because of this. They had to fight. Or they commit suicide. It's a tragedy. Where is the inter international police? Where is the international court? Where is the United Nations? The nations are not united. But they have to be united with a great compliance and humility under the ambitious greatest countries. We wait for the Day of Judgment, the Divine Court, which is much better than you in a so-called international court and your so-called United Nation and so-called uh, the Assembly of the International Security Council. Only the divine court is what we depend on and what we trust, that it will give back the rights of people, even a single, a single right that has the same weight of an atom will be given back to the people. But what I wanted to say, we have taken a lesson from what happened in Afghanistan. That when, we, when people trust Allah, when people feel proud of belonging themselves to Allah and His religion, that they're allies of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's happening in Syria is a miracle. Yes, there are many people that get killed, but at the same time, there is a resistance, not against Bashar al-Assad, but against the whole world who want them to stop resisting, to live under Bashar's family's desire, whether to kill, because he's the owner of Syria. He, he made the whole Syria a key with the family of al-Assad. Under the, under the approval of the whole world,
who saw Bashar for one year and a half killing, killing, and they said, we're still waiting for your, uh, uh, for your reformation, for your promises to reform, etc., etc., with cold-blooded reaction. People are getting killed. It's okay. It's okay. Let people die in exchange of the peace of the chosen people of God. I refer my complaint to Allah. And from Him only we know that the way out and the breakthrough is only from Him. I address my complaint to Allah regarding what's happening in Mali. I'm not happy with those people who've been grown and destroyed. Grown and destroyed. And I mean by that, you know, some extremists. Some of those who are, who are disappointed with the West and, uh, and their destruction uh, to the Muslim countries. They're not happy with that. They are extremely outraged of this. They're behaving wrongfully. I, I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied with what they're doing. But at the same time, I'm extremely angry with what the West is doing nowadays. Every day we have a new tribulation. Sometimes they attack a country. Sometimes they, uh, we, uh, they say you have to be satisfied with the drawing of your prophet, mocking your prophet, attacking your prophet, giving um, asylum to those who are offensive against your religion, against your prophet, etc. You have to be patient. Why? Democracy requires that. You have to train yourself to fit yourselves with these uh, uh, constitutions of democracy. I was wonder I'm wondering, finally, I'm wondering, is there any way to modify it? Or we have to accept all of it? Is it uh, a divine constitution? Or it is suggested by people? Even the West is not happy with this. I know that there are some uh, some shining angles of democracy, I admit. But at the same time, there are horrible results for the so-called democracy in the world. The world is more poor, more crimes, more killings, more misery. Well, thank you for your uh, watching. Just give me your opinion, give me your, uh, your agreement or disagreement. Whether you like it or you dislike it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.